Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to fix a couple issues that we're having with the Monport K40. All right, so we need to realign our laser um, to get rid of the ghosting images that we have going on. But first we are gonna install this milliamp meter. Uh, it goes in line with our laser tube so we can see where the power is at. Uh, we've noticed in switching to light burn that everything seems really underpowered. So we're gonna use this to watch and see what's going on. So like Aaron said, we're gonna put in the milliamp meter. And where that goes is that you can see we've got two wires on the laser tube. This is the high voltage positive side. This is the negative side. This is the line that we're going to tap into. So we're going to get on the front side of this. We will find out where this blue wire is and we will uh, figure the best way to tap into that. This is that blue wire. So it goes down the loom all the way around and it is this one. So we're gonna put the meter up here. So essentially what I'm thinking the best we're gonna do, I'm gonna take it out of this connector. I'm gonna feed it back through here. I'm gonna get it up here and this will go here and then I'm gonna feed a new cable down and we will replace it into this connector. First thing, don't forget, get it unplugged. All right, there's a few zip ties in here so we're gonna see how best I can get it out. All right, so it was easiest just to cut the zip ties, pull the whole loom back. So now I'm just got the two new cables in it. I'm going to reloom it this way, and then we can do it the opposite to get it down to the bottom. This is easy. You just unwind it, and then you wind it back up. Got it all through. It's looking good there. Looking good at the top. Uh, before I do any kind of wire up on that, I'm going to put this paper towel down, making sure wires are out of the way. All right. Now I've put uh, painter's tape up, measured where I want the meter, boxed it out, and put a hole. Not a hole. So what I'm using is a hole saw. This hole saw fits the bigger circle so that everything will fit in there. That's what I'm gonna punch the big hole and then I'll have to figure out where the screw holes go and we will do that. But paper down, paper towel down so that it catches anything. All right, that created a huge mess, so I'm gonna back it up before I open it. All right, still gonna need more cleanup, but. Sweet, inside is pretty clean. We'll just uh, clean that up a little bit more. I'm gonna take down the edges of this with a file, and then we can get uh, the two last screws holes drilled. All right, I made two quick marks for the screws to mount this whole thing on. Going to drill those out and then we'll get it mounted up. All right, now we test fit. And perfect. All right, this came with washers, locking washers, and uh, not for the end of it. So I don't know, it came with four. Obviously, we've got the two here and then the two here. So it'll go washer, locking washer, nut. All right, got that on. These are slightly different gauges. It's what I had. So we'll use one for the blue one, different one for the black one and these go on the screw terminals here and here. Now if you get real close, you can see plus and minus. Plus is on this side, so that's gonna be from the laser tube and then away from the laser tube into the negative post. So we will get these crimped and on. 
All right, I'm gonna leave myself some extra slack just in case, but I wanna get rid of most of it. And I'm gonna use wire strippers here. And we will twist up that end. wire through. Now your crimpers here also show which one is supposed to be used. Non and insulated. So this piece is actually insulated so we use the insulated side. If it's not you would use the non side. And crimp that on. So that's the first one and we'll get the second one too. Four, washer, locking washer, and the nut on last. We've got all that back. I'm going to zip tie this back down like it was. Okay, so what I'm going to do to test is actually plug back in this panel so that I can watch the percentages and do the laser test switch right here and we'll see exactly what we're getting on the milliamp. So I've unplugged the new board and I'm plugging the old one back in. So I've unplugged this board as far as the control and I've got this one back in place. Now we can just do a percentage test and see what the meter kicks out. All right, have everything plugged back in. Now with this little screw hole here, we can adjust this. So if you turn it up or down, so we want it to be, all right, so we adjust this down to where we're right on zero. All right, now we can turn the machine on All right, so we will start with uh, 4%. All right, so we can see that at 4% on the laser, we're looking at about two and a half milliamps. So let's look at 10. We're looking at four milliamps. So now we can go through all of the percentages and I'll write that down on a sheet of paper so I know what everything is. All right, so Aaron and I went through just one to 50 and then hit it up for 100 just for a little bit to see what that went at. But we've written all of that down so we know exactly what we're looking at here and now we can compare that in Lightburn with what uh, power levels we set it at to try to burn. Now we know that 50 We'll cut through three millimeter ply without a problem, and that's 18 milliamps. So we can set a, like say a square in light burn at 50%. And if it's not getting to 18 milliamps, we know something weird's going on. Uh, so that'll be a test uh, for another day. But first we actually have to align the laser because we're getting a weird, um, actually let me test fire it real quick and I'll show you what's happening. We'll get a nice clean spot of wood. So we're gonna fire right here. Um, 
I'll fire it and then I'll bring you right back to look at it. All right, this is just a test fire. I did it a few times. This isn't happening at low percentages, but once you hit you know, mid 20s or so, we're getting this dual image uh, and it's firing it twice. I've looked at the mirrors. Everything looks really well aligned, except this one we know was bouncing off the rails a lot. So I'm not gonna be surprised if this is out of alignment. I am going to take a post-it note and I know a lot of people like to use tape, but I'm going to use a post-it note. I'm going to put it around here to where I can see where that hole is. I'm going to fire really quickly at the percentage I know does the double. We're going to see if this has two in it, or if it doesn't, we know that it's for sure some something in the alignment here. So we'll fire that real quick. All right, so did a quick fire on this, and you can tell that the laser is pretty far back here uh, in where this hole is supposed to be so it's not centered very well my guess is as we go higher power the beam gets bigger and as the beam gets bigger while it's in the back section is that it's reflecting off of something else and shooting this double image so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to loosen the screws on this and I'm going to slide the whole thing backwards and get this uh, get the dot actually in the middle of this and then we will see what it's doing on the board. So there are three screws. This one, this one, and this one in the back. I'm going to loosen them all just a little bit and then I am going to move the entire piece at once. Two. There we go. Slid that back just a little bit. Now I'm going to test it again and see where we're firing. Okay, that little shift is almost in the middle. I'm gonna see if I can get it just a little bit more. All right, tried to make a dimple around where the hole going into the laser head is, and it is firing just about dead center. So now we'll see what it's doing on the wood underneath. All right, so this took a lot of moving around, finicky thing. What I ended up having to do, I took the, the laser head completely off, cleaned the mirror, cleaned the lens, and then I got it in place and I kind of shifted it around. You can see a lot of testing, made it worse, made it worse, finally got it uh, to where it liked where it's at, and then I tightened everything down. So now it's going to stay where it's at. It's got a nice little good beam, so that could have also been why it seems like so little amount of power. All right, well, after all that, uh, hopefully we can do some more tests and get some better results. Yeah, I was a little worried there for a bit because that, that double image just did not look very good and we were losing detail. So yep. um, excited to see what is actually happening with the Monport board so we can report back. I've read a lot of things online about that one and this should help us get some more info out there. All right, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.